So a C6 and an SM. A lot of people would say I'm nuts, but uh, no, that's fair. This is my Citroen C6. It's a 2007. It's powered by a 2.7 litre V6 twin turbo diesel engine, um, which is predominantly built by Ford. It was a joint development between PSA and Ford, but it's more Ford than PSA. I think it's known as a Lion engine. It was also fitted to the Land Rover Discovery, um, the Range Rovers from kind of like the mid noughties and Jaguar S-Type. I think one of the Peugeots had it. Oh, 407 Coupe, I think. Uh, had it. The version in the Discoveries only has a single turbo. This is a twin turbo, two small turbos, whereas the Discovery has one bigger turbo, I believe. And the Discoveries have a kind of knack for snapping crankshafts. Now, this car is a bit of a project. I paid £750 for it, for a C6. £750. So what kind of a C6 does £750 get you? Um, as you can imagine, not a fully functioning one, but it's been pretty good. I've had it nearly a year and a half. Um, I had it on the road for six months, something like that, without fully fixing it and used it daily for six months. Um, the economy around town is not good, but I fell in love with driving it. It's, it's brilliant. I love the thing, but it's been off the road since May. It came off the road because I put my Mark 1 BX on the road and also there were a number of jobs that this car needed to be able to keep using it safely um i you know you could keep driving it but if something breaks this could be potentially catastrophic i've got a noise from the engine it's never good i think drive belt or cam belt related i don't know which i'm hoping drive belt because that's a lot easier to sort out so today that's the first thing i'm going to do i bought some parts for this car probably over a year ago now. I've got bushes, ball joints, uh, brakes, all sorts to do on it. But I haven't got round to doing any of them because we just haven't had the time. Um, and also it's quite a big car and trying to squeeze it in it when you've got other cars in is tough. But today I've got a lull. I've got a CX due in, a beautiful CX due in in a couple of days. But for now, the task is to find out what's wrong with it because time on the ramp is limited and I'm wasting it by talking. So there are a number of issues with my 750 pound C6, but the first one is a noise, and I'll see if I can get it to replicate that for you. In fact, the best thing to do would be to open the bonnet. Pillars, doors. Oh no, I can't because it's on the other side. Yeah, there's me forgetting that the bonnet release was on this side. It's a bit dirty and grubby, it's been sat around a long time. A big aluminium bonnet. With slightly tired lifters. So it's done 155,000 miles this car. Oh, I wondered where that charger had gone. But yes, let's start it and see if we can hear this noise. That's not the noise. That's the suspension raising. Because when you put the key in, before you've even started the engine, because it's got an electric pump, it raises. So it's kind of like with old DS's and things, people used to love the whole characteristics of it. These cars, take the key back out and it should sink. There you go. Put the key back in. I'm flattening the battery doing this, but... There we go, right. So, quite a smooth engine really. It's running a bit lumpy. It's, the battery's gone flat on it a few times. It hasn't run properly. It hasn't done a run for, well, a long time. And all the driving it was doing was all kind of quite short distance as well. So it doesn't like it. It really needs a good run. So I'm hoping that getting it on the road will alleviate some of that. But if I increase the revs, Well, there's lots of noises and things going on. One of them is, uh, well, there's turbos whooshing and all sorts going on, but one of the noises is a dry bearing, a whining and a sort of high-pitched squealing, like a, a dry metal noise. So what I need to do is find out what's causing that. 
if it's a drive belt tensioner or idler or something like that, that's brilliant because I can get one of them or might be able to change the bearing in the one that's in the car. Um, if it's the cam belt side of things, and it's not long had a cam belt, uh, if it's cam belt, that's a pain because I've never done one and it's a lot more work than the drive belt. So what I'll do is I'm going to pull the wheel off. Um, well, I'm going to jack it up first. Pull the wheel off, take the arch liner out, get access to the drive belt, take the drive belt off, so the one that runs the alternator and aircon and everything like that, and then start the engine again and see if the noise goes. If the noise doesn't go, then I know it's cam belt related, or most likely cam belt related. But if it does go, which I hope it does, then it's drive belt related, and I've just got to figure out which one of the things that it can, drive belt controls is causing the noise. Could be the alternator, but that'd be expensive. Could be the air con compressor, that would be expensive. But it could just be the belt idler or belt tensioner. So, fingers crossed. And the first thing I've got to do before I jack it up is put the suspension on high. In the cabin, you've got a number of buttons. This one has more buttons than some of the other C6s because this is an exclusive top of the range. I'm no peasant. I am really. Um, so you've got a number of buttons down here. This is gearbox. So this is the sport mode for the gearbox, sport or ice. Um, this is the suspension, sport or normal. Um, sport does make a difference. It does um, speed all the reflexes up on it. It's got active damping and active springing. So, um, oh, my mirror's going nuts. The buttons either side have to go up and down. Um, and if you push the up, the screen in the middle here will tell you that it's going up. Green, normal ride height, amber, intermediate. So at the moment we're on the way up. Intermediates for clearing obstacles. If I go up again, I go to orange. That's as high as it goes. That's maintenance only. It'll probably tell me that I can do a maximum of five mile an hour. There you go, high position, maximum speed, five mile an hour. If I go above five mile an hour, I think it automatically will come down. So now the car is up, big arch gaps. We can go to Rufford Ford and be on a YouTube video. Right, so I've jacked the car up and taken the wheel off. Um, I didn't show you that because just taking the wheel off. The bit I want to get to is behind here. So I need to, luckily, the arch liner is in two sections. This kind of felt section here, which is covered in moss, um, and the front plastic section. Now I'm hoping that all these clips come undone and I can remove that section and get access to the drive belt. Now this C6 is of course the car I used to uh, take Ian and Carly, that's Hubnut and Miss Hubnut, down to pick up Betty at some Hampton Docks, because it was my daily car at the time. I do miss driving it. It's lovely. It's just, you don't get road rage driving it. You just, if someone cuts you up and you just think, it's everything's a Gallic shrug. And you follow cars down the road and you play a game because you see a car in front of you going like this. Just some normal car, but just lights bouncing up and down on the roof. And, and you think, am I gonna feel that? And you don't, oh my God. Okay, this goes right under the front. <laughs> yeah, so the arch line a bit here, down along all of this. There's bound to be sensors in that. Um, there is normally an under tray that goes under the front there back to about here somewhere, but it was broken and I've, I've fixed it, but I never ended up putting it back on because I stopped driving the thing. <sighs> right, so I need to get that whole under tray section out there, but it does look like you can see the drive belt hiding up there, the bottom pulley. So it looks like I'll get good access by taking this out. All right, I've undone what I think are all the uh, fixings. I had one, which was touch and go. Is it that one? It's, uh, yeah, I might put a new one in there. A lot of fixings holding that together. So I'm hoping... Ooh, what in the name of all that's holy does that do? Look. What does it all do? And it'll all be absolutely vital that it's aligned perfectly as well. I wonder if that's the white line sensor thing, the one that makes your seat vibrate if you wander over the white lines, because that doesn't work anyway. Another sensor. Is this, no, I must have missed a fix in here. 
I must have missed one. Indeed I have. All French cars aren't very well built. Really, because I can't pull this one to bits. So yeah, one arch liner there with a bracket with a number of sensors on the front. One, two, three of them, which point down at the road. I hope that's the uh, lane departure warning system and not something to do with the suspension. The suspension, while I mention it, there's more of it in here. So that I'm guessing is a rigidity regulator. Boy, well, no, here's a look at that. I've removed the um, engine cover and down here, you can see just about, I'll point it with the torch, you can see uh, an idler there down the bottom and then a screw, a, a bolt here and a spring underneath it, just in there. That's the tensioner spring. And just above that, there's a cast 19 mil nut head, or bolt head, uh, which is actually part of that alloy housing. And you lever on that to compress the spring and release the tension on the belt. Now, the pulley down there has got loads of little rubber shards on it. So this belt is possibly part of the reason it's making such a racket. So although it doesn't look that old, I think I'll be putting a new one on it. And I think I'm going to have to clean that pulley. I'm guessing that's the water pump pulley down there. And there's an idler pulley just below that. I can see there's a lot this belt's running. So it's going to have to be important to make sure I put this thing back in in the right order. Right, well, I'm not going to be able to film any of it because you can't see any of it. So I'll just attack it and let you know when it's off. So finally, the belt is pretty much hanging out the front of the engine bay. I've got it clear of the bottom pulley. So what I'm going to do now is fire the engine up and see if the noise goes. Brilliant news. The noise is gone, so it's something to do with the drive belt, not the cam belt. So the question is, which bit of the drive belt is it? So the only one I can really get to up here is, if I pulled this belt out of the way of it, I think I can get to the tensioner uh, pulley. Right, let's try hold the belt out of the way. Oh, the belt's touching the tension. You can't get the belt out of the way without removing the tensioner brilliantly. So I'm going to have to remove the tensioner eventually. I think I just got it to a spin. I think it made a noise. Oh, there you go. Yeah, a little bit of play in it. Bit of a rattle. Not convinced that's um, the noise in its entirety. Right, let's see what else we got. Oh. So, aircon pump, please don't be that. Oh, that's idling quite nicely. That feels good. Alternator above it, I think, up there. I think that's new. No, that's not that. That's good. Um, idler there. Oh! Oh, hello. Oh, that's rougher than a badger's ass. Hey, right, well, that'll be it. Tensioner and idler. So, even better is the fact that it looks like you can get to this. Well, he says. I can't quite get to it. Let's see what size it is. I'm gonna take a guess, is it a 13? Yes, it is. Oh, that's tight. Oh, listen to that. Horrible. What I'm uh, hoping is that there's a bearing inside it and I might just be able to push that out. I don't know if I can get the, uh, oh, get the bolt out. Okay, so there's the bolt. 
And there's the bearing. Oh, yeah, that's it. This is a result, because that's probably the easiest thing to fix. So yeah, I need to get a new bearing in there. See if there's a part number on it. I mean, I could replace the whole thing. I can have a look and see how much they are, but. 6303 LHA. Right. Well, I'm gonna go and see if I can find one of these online. And then at some point I'll come back and try and get the top one out. So, lunch break has been and gone. Um, bearing for that idler, just the wheel that I've taken off, about a tenner for one of them. The actual bearing, it's the, the idler itself, if I bought the whole thing, I don't know. I didn't find one. The only one I found was 78. I'm not convinced that was right, but it could be. I haven't ordered the bearing yet because I'm going to do the... Uh, the tensioner bearing as well. I think we might as well just belts and braces or bearings and braces. Um, I'm going to do both, so I'm going to switch the camera. I've removed some bracketry over here, and you can see in there behind that hose the tensioner. And there's two bolts holding it in a bigger one, which is quite easy to get to, it's there, and a smaller one, which looks quite difficult to get to, but I shall stick my hands down there and see what I can do. So I've got to take this tensioner off to get the belt off because the belt is sandwiched between the tensioner and the engine. Brilliantly, so you can't actually get it out and I'm just gonna change this belt. It's not very old, I don't think, but what with the noise and everything that's been going on. Mm. Yeah, it's not, I wouldn't call it knackered, but it's got, the surface of it is rough as lumps in it from a bits of oil or something. So we're going to clean the pulleys and clean, get rid of that belt and put a different belt on it. Uh, yeah, so it turns out you can't actually get to that other little bolt from the top, but I might be able to get to it from underneath. That's the plan. You're supposed to remove the, uh, this air intake pipe here to do this but I'm trying to do it without disturbing it, mostly out of laziness. It's actually proven to be uh, doubly positive, removing that pipe and doing some other bits and bobs, because I'm finding so many fixings in this thing that aren't done up. There's so many bolts that aren't fully done up. And you know, the fuel hoses, uh, fuel well, pipes hoses across the top of the engine, they're all loose, none of them are clipped in. The bolt, the, whole, the two bolts that hold this air intake boost pipe to the block, only one of them's done up, the other one's not, so the whole thing's just rattling around. So, yeah, I'm kind of, that's how a little job turns into a bigger job, because you have to go around sorting out other problems. This is going to be an absolute nightmare to put back together. So I've got one of the bolts out, holding this boost pipe into the side of the block, which is there. There's two. That one wasn't done up, so I've got that one out finger tight. The other one, yeah, it's just, it's a nightmare to get to. I almost sympathise with the person who's not done it up, but not enough to let them off the hook. <sighs> Managed to get the other bolt out. This is the one that was loose. Can't see, can you? It's gone really dark. This is the one that was loose there. And this is what was fitted. Universal with a spring washer and another washer, blah, blah, blah. But this proper bolt is shouldered. So that little bit in there posts through the plastic and locks up against the metal bracket. That would have just been crushing the plastic. So, uh, brilliant, that is. Uh, it should just pop out. He says, ow! <laughs> this is a difficult car to work on, I'm not gonna lie. Everything is so tightly packed in. There's a lot of stuff. Can't even get this boost pipe out 
and it's diesel, so you're all like absolutely filthy. Remember to remove the engine to take this out. Does need doing though. Right. Bearing be gone. It's in here. The wheel has come off. So now I have two pulleys with iffy bearings. This one's not as bad as the other one, to be fair, but it, I know it's done then, don't I? So this is a 6203. You probably won't be able to see that because it's very dark. The other one's a 6303. So I'm just going to order a couple of bearings because there's nothing wrong with the rest of it. So get some new bearings, press these ones out, press the new ones in. Put it back together, just like that, really easy. Well, that's been somewhat more of an ordeal than I thought it was going to be. But to be honest, that's got to be down to my own naivety because that's a complicated car. It was never going to be quick and easy. The belt noise was actually the reason I stopped driving it because I didn't know what the noise was. And I thought, well, it's either going to be timing belt related, which is bad, or it's going to be drive belt related. Um, and if any tensioners or idlers or anything like that fail in the drive belt area, it can then swish cheese the timing belt and that's bad again. But I would quite like to get this back on the road. It's got all the toys, it's comfy. It's so quiet, I couldn't actually tell that it was making the noise. It's only when I put the window down one day. It has no MOT, so I need to get it MOT'd. It's gonna need brakes all round. It's gonna need lower ball joints. It's gonna need a steering uh, rack gator. It's gonna need, um, it's gonna need, I mean, tires aren't great. So yeah, there's a few things it needs. Basically, yeah, that's the plan. Get this on the road as well there's the tzr and the imp and the other bx and this and that is a pig to work on that engine bay that's why they're expensive to own it's the labor so that job on most cars would be half an hour on this it was like three hours so. 